Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Rather more of a surprise than a pleasure, I would say. Oh, really, Miss Blair, haven't you already caused me enough trouble without trailing after me everywhere I go? Trailing after you? Why, don't be silly, Claire. I had no idea you were sailing today. I'm taking a trip for my health, you know. Absolute doctor's orders. No doubt. You look positively frail. I'll see you later. Yes, much later. <laughs> Well, what are you doing here? Traveling for my health. Absolute doctor's orders and all that sort of stuff. Your friends seem delighted at seeing you. Temperament. Star of my late lamented show. Purely a professional association. But well, what are you doing here? I noticed that your wife didn't fall for that professional association. So why should I? I had a little bird keep an eye on you. And here I am. Aren't you pleased? Oh, delighted. For attracting attention. Let's be nonchalant. Thanks. My lawyer suggested I sue you, but when I heard from a friend in your office, I thought perhaps the bird in hand was better. Interesting. We'd have a fair wind, Mr. Weldon. Yes. We're steering 170 gyro, 150 magnetic. 170 gyro, 150 magnetic. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Rigby. Pardon me, Miss Norval. Captain Hammond's compliments. Dinner will be served at seven. How oh, I love it. Tell him I shall be delighted. Thank you. Don't bother about these. I'm hanging about them. Well, just call me if you need me, right? With a little bit of contrivance, yes. You know the old adage, love laughs at locks. <laughs> I'm afraid I have no sense of humor. Why don't you see this thing sensibly, Claire? We could have a lovely voyage together. Claire. Hello, Percy, please. Hello, Percy speaking. This is Miss Norland, 125. I find this cabin decidedly depressing, but I'd like to be transferred to another one. Yes, Miss Norton. I'll, I'll see what we have available. There may be an extra charge. Yes. Thank you. That is entirely unnecessary. I wouldn't annoy you for the world. I can't depend on that. You know I'm quite mad about you. Don't we at least be friends? Not with connecting cabins. professional association convenient to say the least 
Well, you don't understand. No, I didn't, but I do now. Why, it was purely coincidence that our cabins happened to be next to each other. As soon as we found it out, Miss Norville asked the presser to change it. Explanations are unnecessary, Tony. I thought I meant everything to you until you met that woman. Now I mean nothing. Connie. Don't get the idea that I'm jealous. I don't care. The only thing I'm interested in is my share. Here's a little lady you can't get rid of without a payoff. Well, now, wait a minute, Connie. Your share? Payoff? Ask the little bird. I'm mum for the press. Look here, Connie. I don't get the inference of your remarks. <laughs> you don't? No, I don't. What are you driving at, anyway? Consult your conscience, if you have one. Hello, oh, Mr. Blair. Oh, how are you? How are you? Didn't expect to find you vacationing after yesterday's rumors. No. The street had your firm on the rock. Oh, nothing to it, Alan. Nothing to it. Just a little rain. May I present Mr. Bruce Allen, Miss Fox? Not the Bruce Allen of the time. The criminologist? The same. In person. How interesting. Are you on a case now? No. Just taking a little vacation. Oh, I see. Well, we're taking a stroll. So long. See you later. Friend Allen seems to upset you. Do you think he knows anything? Knows anything? Just what do you mean, Connie? You know. Well, well. Look who's here. Still snooping, huh? No. Just taking a trip for my health. Snooping bad for that. Really? Is that a tip? What do you think? How's your friend, Martin? You ought to know. Fill up the river. Oh, yes. You proved a perfect alibi. I remember. Marvelous memory. You pity if you lost it. Flair's cabin is uh, on the say, safe. surgeon. Listen, what will make Bruce Allen of the time? Here. Where is he? Oh. To meet you, Mr. Mr. Uh, Allen. <coughs> Mr. Alden. I've got the greatest cure for seasickness. If you ever get sick, let me know. My name is Sturgeon. If you seem to remember, just think of a fish. Yeah, all right, all right. Yeah. Come on, I want to talk to you. A fish, you know, one of those. Hey. I'm sure glad I bumped into that friend of yours. I'm not. He's a gentleman. Yeah? A perfect gentleman. Come on, I want to talk to you. Oh. Well, fancy finding you here. The famous Bruce Allen. Vacationing or digging up some poor hidden skeleton? Tell me. Wrong both times. Just couldn't stand New York without the sight of it. <laughs> How long has this been going on? Oh, ages. Ever since the opening of Spring Blossoms. How interesting. Did you like the show? No, can't say that I did. Thought your part was a little forced. Well, you're certainly frank. All the same, I'm very happy to see you again. Allow me to return the compliment. Thank you. Is she steering a good course? Yes, sir. 
Mr. Weldon. Yes, sir. I'd like to have the ship's position by star, please. Yes, sir. Stand by. Time. Twenty-five degrees, thirty minutes. Thank you. I've made the round. Find everything ship shape, sir. Thank you, Mr. Rigby. you leave that bottle alone just once? Bottle? Bottle? Oh, you mean my seasick medicine. No, I don't. Either I meet Blair tonight or you go overboard. But I can't swim. You'll learn. You'll meet him. And when I meet Mr. Blair, Try and remember that you were a gentleman once. Once? I resent that. took another tumble. Oh, really? You hear everything, don't you? No, but I managed to keep my ears open. Hmm. See him any place? There he is, over there. Come on. Not while Alan's there. Well, what difference does that make? A lot of difference. But I don't understand. I believe this is our dance. Sorry. All right. Shall we? me for the past week. Have I? Stop in here. Let's go on deck. Please. I had no. I found it quite comfortable. Well, there's something I want to tell you. Go ahead. I'm listening. Surely you'll grant me a moment. Beautiful 
night, isn't it? So soft and balmy. Did we come out here to talk about the weather? No. We came out to talk about you. You seem to forget, Claire, that much of your success has come through me. I haven't forgotten, and I appreciate everything you've done for me. You thrashed all this out before. I could do a great deal more for you, Claire. I, Claire, I will. Why won't you listen to Reed? Why do you treat me like a schoolboy? They will hardly be safe. Oh, let me go. Oh, please. Claire. I thought I heard Miss Norvell ask you to let her go. Thanks so much. Tired? Down? Talk. After you. <laughs> Excuse me. But is it my old friend, Anthony Blair? <laughs> How are you, Millard? This is a little while later. Here we are, halfway toward Los Angeles. For you pop up. <laughs> Meet Roy Fenton. This is Anthony Blair. How do you do, Mr. Blair? How do you do, Mr. Fenton? You look all down in the mouth. What's the matter? Oh, nothing much. Just an exceedingly dull voyage. I've been bored to death. I'm not much at card, but the way I feel now, I'd be tempted to play a little poker. Say, that's an idea. How about a game in my cabin, eh? Suppose you could get another hand? I guess I could. I'll meet you in your cabin. Fine, I'm on B-deck, 123. Come along, Mr. Fenton. Pardon me. My name's Sturgeon. Think of a fish. Do you play cards? No hablo inglés, no le conozco, no, no juego cartas, nada. ¿Comprende? Déjame en paz. Oh. We're steering 248 gyro, 227 magnetic. 248 gyro, 227 magnetic. Good night, Harry. Here it is. What's the name again? Henderson. Come in. Welcome. Thank you. Well, here you are at last. Thought you fell overboard. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hemingway, meet Mr. Anthony Blair. Henderson. How do you do, sir? How do you do, Mr. Blair? Mr. Fenton. How do you do, Mr. Fenton? Oh, I have Henderson. Sit down, gentlemen. Well, what should it be? Well, personally, I prefer stud. Hmm. Seven card is more of a gamble. Stud's all right with me. Well, here we go. Fine man deal. Hmm. Ace, you win the deal, Mr. Henderson. Here they come. coming in? Just the usual news and what have you. I'll deliver this to Mr. Blair myself. Good night. Good night. You bet, Mr. Blair. One. Come in. Come on, uh, you're delaying the game, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh... Sturgeon. It's easy to remember. Think of a fish. <laughs> All right, Mr. Fish. Not fish, sturgeon. <laughs> well, whatever it is, mackerel, smelt, or if you're going to stay, put in. I resent that. <laughs> Go. 
Come in. I beg your pardon. I'm off duty and thought I'd deliver it myself, Mr. Well, oh, thank you. Excuse me, will you? Something make those You make them up right? Do you mind if I watch a few rounds? Not at all. I know you join us. Well, if there's anything I like better than poker, it's poker. Well, you'll find a chair over there. Thanks very much. I think that's correct. All right. Now then. regret this evening. No. And I hope you won't. Don't dream too much. Good night. Good night. Must be a storm. Sleepy, why don't you go to bed? All right. <laughs> Here we go. Queen, tray. Three racks. Okay. Fair queen. And an ace. Go bed, sir. Five racks. Your five and five more, Mr. Blair. I'll call you. Fair ace. Fair of ace. Well, aces again, eh? You seem to connect quite regularly when you deal, Mr. Henderson. The mark was uncalled for, Mr. Well, I mean it. What are you going to do about it? What am I going to do? Be a sport, Tony. He's a regular fella. He's a regular crook. Are you going to pay or welch? Oh, I'll pay. How much do I owe you? Twelve hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. It is? Count it. Oh, that's all right. One thousand? 
Two fifty. Now, get out. Before we finish this trip, you will be sorry that you made that remark, Mr. Blair. Come on, you'd better go. Good night. If you get seasick, see me. Think of a fish. Oh. <laughs> Tony, if you ever get seasick, see me. All right, I will, Milan. Go ahead, I'll be right down. Well, hurry up. Don't sleep it. And how much did you win? Nine hundred, Mr. Blair. Try and get it. What do you mean? You know what I mean. You're a professional gambler and a crook. I was on the Britannica in 1928 when you were put in the brig for cheating at cards. The name was Benton. Now, uh, get out. Nobody ever said that to me and got away with it. Well, I'll get away with it. Me. I just dropped in to tell you that I met Mr. Blair and had a very profitable evening. What do you mean? I have $1,250 of his money. How did you get it? Oh, a uh, fast shuffle. I warned you to keep away from him. Oh, I'm sorry, sister, but sometimes I'm dreadfully hard of hearing. And I'm not through with Mr. Blair. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. Give me Mr. Ble uh, 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 never mind, operator. That plan, did you say? Yes, I met him. And I'm going to meet him again. Well, I'm going to bed. I'm sleeping. Well, you go ahead, then. I'm going up on deck and get a little air. How are you, Mr. Allen? Hi, sir, sir. Pretty late for you to be up, isn't it? Yes, I should have turned in an hour ago. Good night. Good night. This is a pleasant surprise. 
I came only to return this. But I want you to have it as a token of my esteem. My favors are not for sale. I assure you, I didn't mean that. Oh, yes, you did. But let me show it. I'm not interested. Now, look here, Claire. You owe me a certain amount of consideration. Thirty twenty-five forty, sir. Thirty twenty-five forty. Thank you. Good night. Good night, sir. I've sent for Mr. Allen, a criminologist who's on board. And I'm going to ask him to take charge of this unfortunate affair. This is the cabin, sir. Thanks. Send for me, Captain. Uh, yes, Mr. Allen. I'm going to ask you to help us. Yes, Mr. Weldon, the story. When did it happen? This morning, sometime after one o'clock. Anthony Blair. Well, Mr. Allen, this is Dr. Eichner. How do you do, Doctor? Well, of course, you examined the body. Yes, death was caused by some shot later. Probably a, a knife or a dagger that pierced the heart. Perhaps in the chest, I see. Yes, and you notice a deep gash over the left eye caused by some blunt instrument. Oh, Stewart. Yes, sir. Were you in this cabin at any time last night? Yes, sir. Is anyone else here at the time? Yes, sir. Mr. Sturgeon and the man who shares his cabin. Mr. Dayton, the wireless operator, and the man in D-14. They were playing poker. Wasn't there a woman here, too? No, sir. What? Uh, yes, sir. I did see a lady enter after the men left. Would you know her if you saw her again? Yes, sir. I think so. Let me see. It's breakfast time. Uh, go to the dining saloon and see if you can find the lady in question. If he finds her, may he ask her to your quarters for questioning? Certainly. Stuart, do as Mr. Allen asks. Yes, sir. Well, I'd like to see the men whose names were mentioned there, too. Yes, uh, Mr. Weldon, will you get those men, please? Yes, sir. Blunt instrument. Take a look at those stains, Doctor. That's blood, isn't it? Looks like it. Doctor, in your opinion, would the average woman have enough strength to plunge a knife deep enough into a man's body to reach his heart? I doubt it under normal conditions. But if she were desperate, terribly frightened, or in a fit of anger, it's quite possible. What about an unusually strong woman? Very possible. Well, I'm through here for the time being. I'd like to go to your quarters. Uh, Dr. Eichner, you take charge of the body. Well, Stuart, did you find the lady? The lady is here, sir. Ask her to come in. Did you send for me, Captain Hammond? I did, Miss Norville. Will you be seated, please? Well, Captain Hammond, there's a Miss Forbes aboard. I'd like to see her, too. Mr. Weldon, will you get Miss Forbes, please? Yes. Something very unfortunate 
has occurred. And if you'll be patient for a few moments, Mr. Allen will tell you all about it. What does this mean, Captain Hammond? Mr. Allen will tell you. I think you all knew Mr. Blair. Last night, he was murdered. Tony Blair murdered? And the person who killed him is in this room. Ladies and gentlemen, as master of this ship, I have appointed Mr. Allen to take charge of the investigation. Captain Hammond, I'd like to question these people one at a time. May they wait in there? Sure. I want to see Mr. Dayton first. Uh, Mr. Allen, may I leave? I have a lot of cabins to make up. Well, uh... Oh, yes, he can go. Would you kindly step in this cabin, please? I poker with Mr. Blair last night? Yes, sir. How well do you know him? Not at all. I delivered a radiogram to Mr. Blair. There were four playing. They asked me to join them. Being off duty, I suffered. Did you win? No, I lost a few dollars. What time did you leave Blair's cabin? Oh, I say about 1.30. I went to the smoking room where I met Mr. Henderson. We sat there and talked for fully an hour. Is it customary for you to sit about half the night? Do you have to be on duty at 8? No, sir. But Mr. Henderson had had an argument with Mr. Blair. He was in a dangerous mood, and I thought he'd get over it if we talked a while. What was the argument about? Mr. Blair accused Mr. Henderson of cheating. Did you or did you not have an argument with Mr. Blair last night? Yes, I did. He called me a crook, and naturally I took exception to it. Did you threaten him? Well, not exactly. I... I simply told him that before this trip was over, he'd regret what he had said to me. But why suspect me? My dear sir, everyone connected with this case is under suspicion until proven innocent. That's all. Did Mr. Fenton go to the cabin with you? Yes. Did he go to bed? No. He went for a walk. Do you think it's possible that you might have done the murder? Did I? I'm asking you. No! <laughs> Where else were you during the evening? All over the boat. <laughs> All right. Why did you quarrel with Mr. Blair last night? You quarreled with me. I didn't quarrel with him. Captain? Alan quarreled with Blair earlier in the evening himself. I heard him. Mr. Blair was annoying Miss Novell, and I went to her assistant. It wasn't anything serious. What did you quarrel about? Because he refused to pay his honest gambling debt. That's honest what? gambling debt? Yes. How you changed. You say you saw Miss Novell leave Blair's cabin about 1.30. I did. What were you doing wandering about at that time in the morning? I had a headache. I went to Mr. Blair's cabin for... For what? An aspirin tablet. Why didn't you ring for the stewardess? I don't think you're telling the truth, Miss Forbes. Did you enter his cabin? No. When I saw Miss Norville had been there, I decided it might be embarrassing. What time did you retire last night? About... Two o'clock. Where were you between one and one thirty? 
in Mr. Blair's cabin. Was she alone? Yes. I'm afraid I must ask you what you were doing there. I went there to return something. We got an argument and he refused to let me go. Tell me, what exactly were the relations between you and Mr. Blair? Mr. Blair backed the play I was in, and during the run of the engagement, he repeatedly forced his attention upon me. His wife divorced him, and the papers intimated that I was the cause of it all. Naturally, it was very unpleasant publicity, and I decided to go away. And Mr. Blair followed you on board this vessel? Yes. Captain, would you like to ask Miss Norville any questions? Yes. Miss Norville, have you ever seen this before? I don't realize what you're saying. But I tell you, I did it. He locked the door and came at me like a beast. Oh, I was terrified. Before I realized what I was doing, I struck him over the head with her. Then he, then he staggered in the next room. And I left. Oh, but I, I didn't know he was dead. Oh, it's all right, it's all right. He wasn't dead then. He was stabbed afterwards with a knife. But Captain Hammond still believed I did it. Everything points definitely to you. I'm doing everything in my power to clear you. But I must have all the facts. Is there anything you've forgotten to tell me? are beginning to doubt me. No. But I still feel you're holding something back. I'm sorry, but I, I've told you everything I can. Claire, you're making it dreadfully difficult for me. want my split. You can't double cross me. I'll get it. Or else I'll tell who killed me. What do you make of it? Just a moment, Captain. Well? Anything new develop? No. I've decided that the message found in Mr. Blair's pocket doesn't help us any. I tell you, Mr. Allen, that Norville girl is guilty. I agree with the captain. I disagree with you, sir. It's purely circumstantial evidence. Mr. Weldon is right. You're trying to pin the murder on this girl, Captain, purely on circumstantial evidence. But I'll prove you're wrong before this night is over. Captain Hammond, Mr. Dayton has been found murdered. Mr. Dayton? Where? On sea deck, just forward to Miss Norville's cabin. Good heavens. Take us there at once. Come, down. His heart was pierced with an knife. He was the wireless operator, wasn't he? Yes. I think I'd like to go to the wireless room. These are all that are in the log, sir. Nothing unusual here. I think there's a message missing. It should be in New York. Well, we'll find out. Ray Savey will ask for a repeat on all messages in the last 24 hours. Yes, sir. that one.
one, two. Here's one you haven't seen. with $100,000 of his firm's money. Find the money and you have the murderer. I think Mr. Allen is absolutely right, Captain Hammond. I'm sure he is, Mr. Weldon. Well, I dislike doing it, but I'm afraid we shall have to search the cabins of all those you question. Mr. Weldon, get a master key from the purser and meet me in front of my cabin. Yes, sir. We'll search Miss Norvell's cabin first. I'm convinced she's implicated. I'm convinced that she's innocent. And if you insist upon searching her cabin, then count me out of it. Oh, no, don't take that attitude, please, Mr. Allen. You know, we're all working toward the same end. But if you feel that way about it, well, I'll search her cabin and you can look through some of the others. All right. Mr. Rigby, keep this information from the crew and the passengers. Yes, sir. Not a word, Sparks. Yes, sir. Much. It wasn't as much as I figured. Pardon me, Captain. I've got my hat coming and I'm going to get it. Good heavens, I wonder if she's been... Open that door. I beg your pardon, Miss Noel. We knocked, but thought there was no one in. What are you doing here? Mr. Blair had $100,000 in his cabin at the time of his murder. That money has disappeared, and we're looking for it. But I know nothing about it. Mr. Weldon, see what you can find. This is an outrage. Under the circumstances, I have no alternative. I found this on the shelf in the closet. So you didn't know there was any money here? You didn't know anything about it? But I... I don't understand. Perhaps the police will understand when we dock tomorrow? Find Mr. Allen, please, and ask him to come to my cabin immediately. Yes, sir. Miss Norville, you may consider yourself under technical arrest. You mean I'm a prisoner? You're not to leave your cabin until the ship docks. Mr. Allen, Captain Hammond would like to see you right away. We found $5,000 in new bills in Miss Norville's cabin. I have an errand to do, and then I'll be right up. Thank you, Mr. Weldon.
Mr. Weldon. Good evening. Visiting? No. Just working on a little theory of my own. You're certainly a hard worker, Mr. Weldon. I do appreciate the way you've been trying to help us solve this mystery. Oh, I don't mind. It agrees with me. So I noticed. You seem to be putting on a little weight. Oh, Mr. Allen. Mr. Weldon has told you about our finding the money in Miss Norvell's cabin? Yes, he has. I didn't want to go on with our search there until I had you with me. Shall we go down and now? Wait a minute, Captain. I think I can save you the trouble. Put up your hands, Weldon. Now, what do you Put mean? Put them up. Rigby, open his coat. There's the balance of your money. Rigby, take the gun. Well, what does this mean? Means that Mr. Dayton received the wireless message and conspired with his friend Weldon to rob Blair. Blair resisted, so they killed him. But why was Dayton killed? Because dead men tell no tale. You shouldn't have planted that money in Miss Norvell's cabin. That was your only mistake. Outside of that, it was a pretty good job. Bon voyage, Mr. Weldon. Sorry. 